Welcome. I am a lay Shin Buddhist who nevertheless maintains an interest in the broader realm of Pure Land and Mahayana Buddhist teachings. My YouTube channel is called Akala Akala, that is A-C-A-L-A-A-C-A-L-A. In these podcasts, I make a non-scholarly, humble, and sometimes bumbling attempt to explore a particular topic or question related to the wonderful Buddha Dharma. I hope you find them to be of interest. With that said, let us begin. So, if you are hearing this in some kind of a podcast format, that means I have actually found a hosting site for podcasts and have somehow figured out how to spin these words out into the internet through the the vehicle of a podcast. Now, I've only done one other podcast on sort of an experimental basis, and that was focused on the biography of Reverend Kenryo Tsuji. And I mentioned in there his Profession of Faith document, which he did many decades ago, actually. And the only thing I got around to quoting on it was the very, very beginning of Article 1, which is, We affirm our faith in Amida Buddha, whose infinite light of wisdom and compassion shines on all corners of the universe. So, in this Article 1, the first subtitle, if you will, is called Faith. And in the first paragraph, uh, Tsuji says, The first article tells us about the object of our worship, our faith in Amida, and what kind of Buddha he is. The teachings of Shinran Shonen begin with faith and end with faith. In the epistles of Renyo Shonen, eighth descendant of Shinran, we find the words, In the teachings as taught by the Shonen, faith is the essence. Well, there's a lot to unpack there, beginning with the term faith. For many people in the West, the term faith is kind of hard to swallow, primarily because, uh, well, a couple of reasons perhaps. I think one, because it is strongly associated with Christianity, that uh, many folks who are attracted to a Buddhist path are inclined to differentiate from Buddhism, but also the idea that sort of one is loath to take something on blind faith, something that one doesn't uh, somehow have some evidence for it in the context of our orientation toward the emphasis on science uh, in the West, or again, something that we may not have uh, a sense of conviction about in our inner heart. Well, in more modern times, I think that Shin Buddhists themselves have probably a little bit steered away from the the term faith and are actually are using, I think, the Japanese term uh, more, which is Shinjin. And Al Bloom, uh, who is one of the uh, Western Shin Buddhists who I have a lot of respect for, I think he translates it, as do many others who translate various uh, scriptures within the Pure Land tradition. Uh, he translates it as entrusting, which I think in some ways is a better word. It's one that is easier to relate to in terms of what is the actual process, what is the actual function we are performing when we rely upon Amida Buddha. Also here we hear, uh, and I don't mean to be critical of this because it's a wonderful treatise or wonderful sort of set of articles of faith, um, but when we talk about the object of our worship, again, this kind of has sometimes for some people a little bit of a negative connotation. But I think that one of the key aspects of a faith-oriented religion, if you will, or one that involves entrusting, is to recognize some difference between our own self and our own level of goodness, if you will, and if you want to think of it as the level of goodness or, or purity or uh, wisdom and compassion, to use the Buddhist uh, phrases there, uh, of some uh, entity, some deity, if you will, like Amida Buddha. And I know, again, thinking of Amida as a deity can rub people the wrong way, but really, we are, in that sense, thinking of their being, as they say in the 12-step program, I guess, a higher power, some higher power in the universe. And again, I come back to the term inconceivable. We, don't, we can't, with our thinking mind, uh, understand or, or accurately characterize what the nature of reality is or even who we are vis-a-vis -vis that reality. But when we have this faith-oriented approach, again, I think the key 
is to see our own limitations in contrast with the idealistic attributes, the, the highly positive and laudable characteristics of that higher power, whatever label or, or name we might give to him or her. So when we say worship, I guess, to my mind, just as I'm thinking about it here, what we're doing is we're acknowledging that. We're acknowledging uh, I am a being full of, uh, to use the Buddhist term of what the three poisons are, full of greed, anger, and, and ignorance. In other words, greed being um, lust, desire, uh, and attraction for things that I, I am predicting and thinking will give me pleasure. Aversion or hatred, meaning wanting to push away those things that I think will cause me uh, displeasure or pain. And then, of course, ignorance or, or illusion or delusion being related to the fact that with this thinking mind, with this dualistic perspective on reality, we are not seeing reality with a capital R. We are not seeing the true nature of what exists or <laughs> in the sense of sunyata, what exists or doesn't exist, but is beyond this way of sort of breaking reality down into this versus that. So again, when we worship, we think of our own limitations vis-a-vis -vis these, these various poisons or negative characteristics which are within us as limited human beings, unless we're a Buddha, which I'm not. And uh, in the context of Shin Buddhism, there's an acknowledgement that we're not Buddhas. Now, uh, just to go off on a sidebar here, obviously there are some uh, teachings within Buddhism to the effect that we are Buddha, uh, even in our current status. And we can talk about that maybe in a future uh, future podcast. But for the sake of this first article uh, of a profession of faith and talking about worship is we contrast ourselves, or I do, let me speak for myself, I contrast myself knowing what my weaknesses and limitations are uh, with Amida Buddha. Amida Buddha, who, uh, who again means, as it says here in the second paragraph, is a fully enlightened one. A Buddha is a fully enlightened one and represents infinite light and life. Infinite light being wisdom, being a full appreciation of what we can only characterize in verbal terms as that notion of sunyata or emptiness. The idea that if we want to put it in verbal terms that any individual entity, be it a thing or a person or ourselves, is empty of any totally independent self-existence. So the Buddha is fully aware of this. He, he or she has this concept, not as a concept, but as an actual experiential reality. So the Buddha uh, Amitabha is the Buddha of infinite light, in the sense of wisdom, this wisdom or sunyata, and the Buddha of infinite life or compassion, Amitayus. And what does that compassion mean? It means the desire to save living beings from our limitations, particularly from our ignorance, from our illusions of a, of a separate self. And to my mind, the way I think of it, and you know, you can take this or leave it, that if we have uh, any even glimpse of this wisdom or sunyata, if we even have a sparkling, <laughs> twinkling, <laughs> momentary, brief sort of insight about it, what, what part of what we can characterize it as showing us is a pro profound and mysterious interconnectedness. In other words, again, that we are not separate. Uh, from other things and other people in the world, from other sentient beings. And so, you know, if you think in terms of the Bodhisattva path leading up to Buddhahood, uh, the Bodhisattva basically says to himself or herself, look, if I'm interconnected, if I am a sort of a part of this, this network of life, that, that it makes no sense for me to simply uh, utilize whatever insights or wisdom I have to go off into a nirvana that involves sort of peace of mind and tranquility for my own self, because there's no such thing as my own self as a separate being. So what that leads to is a feeling or a sense of compassion, and that's what Amida experiences in full force. 
And it was because of that compassion that he experienced in the context and in the course of his bodhisattva career as Dharmakara that he therefore made his vows in the presence of the Buddha Lokasvara Raja uh, to create a pure land that we could be reborn in only by the, the act of uh, entrusting in him, entrusting, which again, uh, Reverend Suji refers to as faith, which is fine, because faith characterizes it. It is faith. It's a faith in a vow that, you know, there is no scientific evidence for it. Let's face it. In other words, we do have to take a leap here, but the leap is in the context of our own experience and to take it a step further in terms of the, uh, the Shin Buddhist uh, doctrine, the doctrine of Shinran Shonen, the 13th century uh, saint, if you will, or Dharma master who articulated this system of pure grace, is that his, his uh, notion was that even that entrusting is not something we do. In other words, we are basically totally uh, helpless to fulfill the requirements to attain Buddhahood on the basis of our own self-power, at least in this day and age. Uh, there may or may not have been people in some uh, parts of history who have been able to attain Buddhahood, and there probably were. Again, people like um, the Sixth Patriarch uh, of Zen Buddhism, just as an example. But here's the, uh, here's the thing. Even that entrusting is a gift. We are being given a gift of faith by Amida to permit us to experience this entrusting in him, this Shinjin, which when we experience it, there is no longer a need for evidence in a scientific sense, uh, because at that point we know, we know deep in our hearts that uh, when we die, we will be reborn in a Western paradise uh, created by Amida Buddha that is a uh, refuge for us, that is a way that we can escape this world of suffering, this samsaric existence, this round of births and deaths that creates uh, so much suffering and pain that at times, you know, it's even unbearable. With that, I will sign off by reciting the Nembutsu in gratitude for being embraced and accepted just as I am by Amida Buddha, never, never to be abandoned. Namo Amida Boots, Namo Amida Boots, Namo Amida Boots. Thank you.